Hi, I'm Sandra Oberlees. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to our next installment in our mini printer build. The last step we completed was to assemble the bed and we also made sure that we had rods for our x-axis attached so that our x-axis could be wide enough. Going back over my notes, I realized that we just checked the, the distance of the rods and put them in there and then took them off again and put them back on again. So if you need to take your top off uh, in order to get the rods under there, that's okay. Uh, this next step, we're actually going to be attaching the z-axis to the x-axis. We're attaching them both together. So now we're going to put on our threaded rods and our couplers and two more of our stepper motors. Now my notes say initially that what we need to do is attach the uh, paper clip into the hinge of our display case. I don't know that you really want to do this at this step because you're going to have to take it off again when we go to insert the display, but basically the paper clip is going to be unfolded and you're going to flip it upside down and there is a little gap in here, like a little ridge, that will allow you to slide your paper clip in and you're going to have to use your long nose pliers because the gap here is a little bit wide so you need it just long enough so that you can kind of fold it in there and still get it in the corner and with the hinge and the top and the display case on the printer it's kind of difficult to do that and with the Z the act, connecting the Z axis you might want to be taking off the top anyway uh, but you can either do this now or you can do it later but what you're going to do is you're going to take the paper clip and just kind of feed it probably needing the pliers but through this little gap through the holes in the display and the basically the hinge holes and everything all the way across and then you're going to kind of straighten it out a little bit and push it a little bit more until it goes all the way across and you're, you're going to be putting this on and off a couple of times. Once it comes out the other end, and I need to unfold this a little bit more and push it just a little bit more through. You're going to get it through the other end. And I don't know if you can kind of see this, but my paper clip has come here. I've got a little bit sticking out on the end, and so I'm going to kind of twist it around so that my hinge kind of goes basically under here and now it's on there and it'll go up and down and it's just the paper clip. You're going to be taking that on and off a couple of times as we go through it. I also know that our hinge is still unstable. There's another screw hole back in on either side of here that will attach this to the frame that we haven't done yet and because we're still moving around we're going to attach the electronics which go in here. Basically get everything set here you can take the display on and off as we get through each step depending on whichever way it's easiest for you to work on. And what we're going to do next is we're going to attach the z-axis. So I'm going to flip it around. You want to make sure that if you didn't do it before that you've got the screws on the back holding the 15 and 16 in the front to the standing plate in the back because now we're going to attach the stepper motors to the bottom of 15 and 16 and we still have X is kind of in our way. Now this should be sliding smoothly. This should be sliding smoothly. When we're done with this step, you're going to take the ends of those belts that have a little bit of gap on them, the leftover edges, and you're going to cut them short so that when it goes to the end, it doesn't bang into the, the ports. Like right here, it's hitting the gear and so it's going to limit how far this can go back and forth. So eventually, when you're totally set, you're going to cut those short. I'm not ready to cut mine yet, so I'm going to leave it. I'm just letting you know the same is going to go for the belt, but you want to get it tight, and I still don't have my tensioner all the way tight. My belt is still a little bit loose, so I'm going to adjust that still as well. Okay, so let's attach the Z. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take my rods off, to get that z-axis out of the way. Okay. You're going to attach the stepper motors to 15 and 16, one on each side, and they're going to 
just like the others they're going to click in, inside this hole you want to get those firmed up against it so if you need to cut out with your exacto knife and smooth out those surfaces inside these two rings you can they're going to go so that the stepper motor faces the connector in front and you're going to use four M3 by 12 screws from the top down into the stepper motor on both sides. So you're going to use eight screws all together. And you might want to do alternate corners first so you can get that in there and then it stays even. And you might want to screw the screws into the parts 15 and 16 first, just deep enough so that it gets through the bottom of the part so that you can feel it down there and then you can hold the stepper motor up after that and connect it in so that you're not having to screw it into both parts at the same time. Attach the rest of the screws just into this part just to make it easier so I can feel the screw through the bottom. But again, you wanna make sure that you have screwed parts 15 and 16 onto the standing plate those, those back walls there so that um, because now that we're putting those stepper motors on you are blocking the access to those screw holes so you've got to do that before you can put the stepper motors on okay so I've got that there I'm putting this one now you have an option I'm putting mine facing forward so that the wires are facing forward if you want to put them facing sideways you can um, depending on you know, basically we just have to have accessibility to them. Um, we will be attaching wires to them in the electronic stage. And so you need to be able to get to those and in the troubleshooting and as you do different steps, you will be plugging in and unplugging those wires. So I've got ones now going sideways and one going forward, which you're going to want to put them both going the same direction. But right now I've got them in two different orientations. I can move that later. And part of that is going to be uh, taking care of your cable management because we're going to have a lot of spaghetti that's going to go along with um, long cables and having to tie them up and, and co coil them up so that they're not in the way and not hitting other parts. Not getting in the way of the x-axis moving or the z-axis moving or the or the y-axis moving when it's moving back and forth in use when the printer is running. Screw the other side. I think I'm going to move this one and make mine, both of mine go sideways instead of coming out the front. And then you will decide, once you get your cables on and you're trying to work with your cable management, if you decide you need to rotate these, you can, but carefully. We're going to have the Z-axis screws attached to this in the next step here. Okay. So now they have all eight screws on those two stepper motors attached. If you've still got some excess filament sticking out on the bottom of your bed, you're going to want to nip that off really close to the timing belt because otherwise it's going to get in the way and it's going to fly out of there while the bed is moving back and forth. I just noticed that I still have mine in there and I just wanted to cut it. So I've got, I've got my clippers here or my nippers for my filament and I'm just going to nip that short. Nip this one short. So that they are in the timing belt mechanism but they're not dangling out and being in my way okay and they're not going to uh, get in the way of the rest of the printer during its its function okay again we still have an unstable frame and hinge here the next step for attaching the z is we're going to use these two couplers and these have two screws similar to the way we had it on the timing gear belts, right? And what these do, these go onto this stepper motor, right, onto that post. Instead of a gear, we're going to use this. However, what's going to go on the other side is our screw. So this is going to go through this hole, and it doesn't screw into that hole, it's just loose, but it's going to go in here. The problem is, and it's going to stick out over the top, the problem is 
this coupler. You want it down as far as you can get it so that it gives us more room for the X and Y to go up and down. But if I put it down too far, then this top screw hole won't hold in the screw. So you've got to raise it up enough so that when this goes in, this screw, when we tighten it down, will hold will hold this this screw in place. So basically you've got to find a happy medium between having enough room and having it low enough so that the stepper motor uses it and so that there's still room. And you can kind of see the, the end of the stepper motor post down there. I would suggest getting it so it's kind of even. You still need to be able to see that screw hole so you can tighten it. So I would say get it down far enough so that you can see where the screw hole is and see where the access to the the Z axis because you need to again you need that Z axis screw down far enough. I'm going to kind of put it right there and tighten this down. And it uses the same hex wrench as your screw. So I've tightened that one down. Now before I put this one in here, it's got to screw into my X axis. So this side, the 01 goes on the left, the 10 goes on the right, and you're going to screw it through these nut holes. The nuts are what's going to keep it in place. As the coupler turns the screws, okay, this x-axis is going to ride up and down on these nuts. So it needs to be able to flow smoothly and you've got to get them even too. They can't be sitting cattywampus or it's not going to slide up and down on the rods very well either. And remember the nut is on the bottom of part 11 and the top of part 12 so they're not exactly in the same spot when we start and we'll have to adjust that as part of the bed leveling process because our bed doesn't actually move our z-axis and our x-axis do. So I'm going to move this so that they're both just at the top of parts 10 and 11 which will put them about even on the bottom I think when I get that way. Okay I've got it just a little bit up the top on both of these. Looks like one of my rods is a little bit bent which will be a problem. Alright so now I'm going to put the other coupler on, roughly the same height as the, as the first. You want them the same height because, again, that's where your x-axis stops. Equal distance from the top. And actually, there's two screw holes on here on the bottom. There are four holes on your coupler. They're fairly close together, but you want both of them set. So once those are fine, okay, you're going to run these into here but you also have to drop it down enough so that the x-axis goes down. So I'm going to have to screw this down enough so that I can get it under and in through this hole. Part 10 is the flat side up and I just had it like this. So basically this stepper motor will ride up and down on the back, you know, behind on that one side. I want to make sure that the two are even. Put it through the z-holes. onto the couplers and hopefully they're the same height now. Okay, looks like they're fairly even. Loosen up these couplers, make sure that the screws go down as far in as they can. You gotta loosen it enough so that the screw will actually go down in there. And it should on the Z top here, it should ride smoothly and they should have the same amount sticking out. This one's got more, so I've got to lower it. And once it screws, once they get even, they don't, you have less resistance, and so it goes smoother. Right now my two couplers spin because they're not connected to the screws, which is good. While I adjust and get this where, and it won't, of course, it won't now slide up and down because it's got the screw. So you're going to have to screw it into the screw holes. Okay, if I go all the way to the top here, as far as it'll go. Okay, and now I can, once they're in the coupler, then I can tighten down the coupler again and make sure that they are tight. Okay, and now when I turn these, be 
you got to turn them both the same direction. And it should, okay, now that just clicked. And so my Z axis is, my Z top is a little bit bent and I got to get that straightened out or maybe drill that hole a little bit bigger so that that screw rides freely because it, it shouldn't be screwing onto this Z top. It should kind of be just floating in that hole. So, um, and right now, since my whole frame up here is kind of loose, the Z top is kind of loose. So I'm gonna, uh, I will enlarge in that hole a little bit later. But I wanna be able, you gotta screw the screws both the same way. The screws will stay, or the, the screws themselves will stay in the same position, but that Z axis should move up or down. Okay, so when I'm turning my couplers, it is dropping my X axis, but I've got, it's catching on the screw, so I keep hearing it click. So as I go the different directions, that X axis will move. And with the stepper motors, they will move in time with each other, so they'll stay synchronized. But you gotta get them synchronized to begin with so that they don't do that, or so that they don't get out of step, all right? Okay, now once we've got this done, okay, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna adjust the tensioners on both the X and the Y. Okay. You're going to cut off any excess. You're going to make sure that the carriage slides back and forth evenly on those rods. And then the next step is to set up the electronics. Okay, one thing I got to do real quick that we need to do before we take off is we need to reinsert our rods. So we're going to put these through the top x-axis through the LM6UU. So now we're going to insert our 150 millimeter rods through carefully and this will help stabilize that z-axis I'm going to go all the way down into this and bottom out at the stepper motor looks like I've got those in there and now that I've got those the z-axis will ride smoother as I turn it you got to make sure you're turning in the same direction on both of them to make it go up or to make it go down. And then when we get the, the electronics on there, the electronics will move both in conjunction with each other because we've only got one stepper driver for both motors. So they'll be connected to each other. All right, thank you.